Hello, Christopher. Good morning. We are live hey. on our very first Google Hangout on air. Um, you know that I have um, a favorite question, and that is actually asking people, how do you do? But I don't mean this in a very superficial way. I, I really want to get deeper and, and um, want to find out, so, so how are you um, how are you even on a, on a scale from 1 to 10? And how happy are you currently with your body? Wow, that's a loaded question. Um, I'm actually a 9 out of 10, to be honest. And things are really good in terms of my body. I, I was gone to South America for like two and a half months traveling, and I came back to Chiang Mai about a few months ago. And since then, I've been really dedicated to getting a daily routine in. So I've been working out a lot, juicing twice a day, eating healthy. So it's been about three months now, and I feel phenomenal. So I'm actually like a 9 out of 10, to be honest. I'm so happy to hear that. This is excellent. 9 out of 10 is a very good number. Um, of course, my next question would be, was it always like that? Um, no. There was a... Uh, there's a bit of a dark, dark past that I had to go through, and um, that's I actually before I moved to Thailand, I moved. I, I was living in New York for eight years, and I worked on Wall Street. And during that time, I um, I was just working a lot. You know, it's it's that typical crazy New York go 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 rat race. And at, at the same time, I was also doing my MBA, and you know, I wasn't sleeping, just really stressed out, and I had a collapsed lung, which happened twice. So that dark area really was hard for me. So I was probably like a negative nine out of 10 at that point. I met you actually, maybe I, I share that also with uh, the others, that, that we met in, in Chiang Mai during a, a meditation. And uh, when you then mentioned this to me, I, I could hardly believe it because I saw you as this very fit, lean uh, person sitting next to me. And uh, when I then, found out from you what, what um, health struggles you had to get, go through. It was like I could see something like almost black and white. And, and for me, there was a, a tremendous transformation that I saw happening in you. Yeah, that uh, it's, it's if, when I look back at that time, I feel like I was such a dip. It feels like a lifetime ago, to be honest. Like It's been three years that I've been living since I left the U.S. And I look back and I'm like, man, I can't believe I used to live over there. Like, it's, my life is completely different. But that's that's the thing. That event was a catalyst to me taking a step back and questioning what do I want out of life? What's what's important to me? What makes me happy? And you know, it was a wake up call, and I used that to to kind of just to leave. And that was that's been pretty much my main goal for the past three years of coming here is to take the time and be in the environment to nurse myself back to health, to heal myself, and to kind of like figure out about myself and, and life. Was the wake up call for you something that um, happened very early at, at the time when, when, when uh, you had health issues? Or was it a gradual process or, you know, how did that happen for you? Yeah, it, it was a bit of a gradual process. So obviously, you know, when the collapse log, that's when it like, it kind of, shook me and woke me up but obviously i didn't know what to what to make of it you know so like that it took me four years to complete my mba so during those four years i was just like man i need to start thinking what am i what's gonna be my exit plan what's gonna be my strategy mm -hmm. so towards the last the last year of my mba i started writing out i used to daydream a lot so i used to think about travel all the time and i made a list of countries i want to go visit and then what happened was i um I was part of an email group and I got an email for New Year's and it was a motivation, not a, it was more of like a motivational speech. And the main message from this guy was try something new that pushes you outside your, your boundaries. And for me, I, I don't like to do things on New Year's. I think you should always be gradually improving. But this time I was like, All right, you know what? I'm going to try kickboxing, Muay Thai, because I've never done it before. I've never done any martial arts. So I tried for a free martial arts class, Muay Thai in New York City. And I got addicted to it. I was like, oh, my God, this is so much more fun to lift the weights. And, you know, so, so I tried it for a couple of weeks. And the more I, I realized it, I'm like, you know what? I need to do something with this. So when I finished my MBA, I told my boss, I'm like, listen, I need time away from my job. I need 
not just like a go three day weekend. I'm like, I need to take like a month off because I was so overworked and, and exhausted. So I had enough vacation time to take six weeks. So I booked a ticket to come to Thailand for one month. He let me do it. And yeah. I came here, this was 2012. And I came here for six weeks. I went to Phuket for three weeks. I came to Chiang Mai for one week and then I went to Bangkok. And all I did was I just traveled around and I trained at different Muay Thai gyms uh, throughout Thailand. And it wasn't just doing Muay Thai, but I met other expats who were living here at the time <laughs> who, who were here for like six months, nine months. All work, some were working online. I also met my meditation teacher who I never done meditation before and that's the first time I tried it. And, you know, it, it, I had some kind of experience trying to put in words, but I felt something. So when I left Thailand, it, it changed my whole perspective on life. It had that big of an impact. And it was like, I was like, you know what? I got to go back to Thailand. So I went back to New York and it took me like two months to kind of like weigh things out. Cause I didn't want to be emotional and just be like, cause you know, it's easy to romanticize a place when you come from vacation. So I took two months to think about like, what would I do? You know, what would be my goals that I want to do and how would I even make it happen? So after two months, I was like, you know what? I'm going to quit my job and move back. So I had to like keep, I had to keep that news under wraps because, because I was working on Wall Street at the time, you have year end bonuses, which get paid out at the end of the year. So I bought my ticket to come to Thailand, but I couldn't tell anybody. I, I told my parents, but like I couldn't tell my work friends. I couldn't tell my friends. I didn't want to jeopardize my job. So after New Year's um, came and I got my bonus, I walked to my boss's office, my, my boss's, um, uh, office and said, listen, I'm quitting my job and I'm moving to Thailand on a one-way ticket. And at first he didn't believe me. He was like, no, really? Where, where are you getting, where's your next firm that you're going to work at? Can you get me a job? I'm like, Vinny, no, I'm actually quitting my job and just moving there. So that's, that's what key started this three year journey, but it was a gradual process of, you know, Muay Thai, then meeting other people, realizing what it is that I want. And so, yeah, it eventually climaxed to me moving out, quitting my job and coming to Thailand. But that's, that's pretty much where it started my journey. That not really, to be honest, the only doubts I kind of had was would I have enough, would I have enough stuff to keep me busy to make sure I don't go bored or, um, uh, like, cause you meet some people who just come here and they just party, they booze, they don't have focus. You're not directing their energy. For me, I had, I actually wrote a whole blog post. My goals were to have as many Muay Thai fights as possible to do a Vipassa meditation for 10 days to create an online business and to do some kind of charity work. So, you know, the first year and a half I lived here, I had my first Muay Thai fight. I actually came to Chiang Mai and did a Vipassa retreat for 10 days. And, you know, my second year here, I then started working online. So when I got here, I pretty much had my, my marching orders of what to work on. So I didn't really have any doubt, to be honest. It was just a matter of, like, you know, just making sure I stay focused and didn't get distracted. Those were, like, the only doubts. But, you know, it wasn't, to be honest, like, if you had asked me what's harder, going on a journey to figure and heal yourself or to stay put back in your old miserable life. And I will tell you, the harder choice is to stay back in New York and be miserable and live that life over and over and over and, and feel like you're a walking zombie and be dead. I honestly feel like that because for me to, to have the freedom and the opportunity to go start a new life, that's, that's like an easy choice for me to, to choose that. So that's, I think it's not many of the doubts and I wasn't really that, that worried about being it too hard. I want to go back. Uh, you, you have spent quite, quite a few, also quite a lot of time in the hospital. Is, is that right? Like in that process there? Yeah, from the collapsed lung. Um, I mean, even before the collapse, so yeah, with the collapsed lung, I was, it happened to me twice actually. I was, I was age 29 and 30, and it, ha it happened twice within um, a one year period. And both times I had to take at least one month of, um, of just staying at home, not working, And, you know, I lost a lot of weight. I lost like 20 pounds. I couldn't work out for like a couple months after surgery. You know, I was in a really fragile state of mind. And then even after that happened, I still had health issues. I remember going to the doctors and, um, you know, getting blood work done because she'd be like, your cortisol stress levels are, are through the roof. Your testosterone levels are as if you're like a 50 year old guy. And, you know, I'm a young, I was a young 20 year old guy and like my yeah. hormone level very healthy. So even after that, you know, it was just like one health problem after another. And, you know, it's, I, that's why I think it, it's just the mental and spiritual part of my life was neglected and it manifested 
as physical health problems. So yeah, besides the collapsed lung, I was constantly going to doctors for one issue or the other. I also have asthma and you know, it was, it's crazy. Like she tried all these different things. And now that it's three years I left there, I, I can tell you what it was, but you know, during that time, it's like she kept throwing all these little band-aids or fixes. And obviously, you know, it's, it was a bigger problem than, than what we're focusing on. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have somebody watching our little conversation here and is currently in, in health problems, um, what, what would you recommend this person? Um, like, what is your personal take on how to go forward in life? Um, there's a really good book I read by James Altucher. It's called Choose Yourself. And unfortunately, I didn't... What, what's the title? Yeah. It's called Choose Yourself by James Altucher. Okay. And he's a really, he's a pretty famous guy. He helped find, found uh, Twitter, I think. And he's, he's done like, he's done a lot of different businesses. But I didn't read the book until maybe a year and a half after I moved to Thailand. I wish I'd read it sooner. But it basically confirmed a lot of things that I had discovered on my path. And the, and the thing that he touched upon is called, a thing called the daily practice. And that's where you do something uh, that is for your physical health, something for your mental health, and something for your spiritual health. And for me, physical was never a problem. You know, I always worked out. But I think for me, the biggest thing was not sleeping. We, as Americans, neglect sleep. It's, it's almost glorified to be a workaholic and say, oh, I only, worked, I only slept for five hours. I worked 60 hours a week. And, yeah, I'm tough. I'm going to do this. And it's like, you know what? You're, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're going to burn yourself out. And that, I think that's what actually had caused my lung to collapse was a lack of sleep. So I think, I think you need to get sleep a minimum seven hours a night. And, and that's the thing. It's like, it's the easiest thing to do. All you have to do is lay there. And I think that's one of the most important things for my daily practice. The other thing is um, meditation. I try to do 20 minutes, 30 minutes in the morning. And mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's, it, it takes 21 days for something to become a habit. And in the beginning, you know, it was a bit hard. But there's things like um, uh, smartphone apps. One thing I use is called Insight Timer. Um, that mm -hmm. is nice and helps track it. But suppose I've talked to other friends who just started meditation. They actually suggested a thing called Headspace, I think. So I'm using it too. You use that also. So yes. I've never seen it, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Yeah. And, um, and you know, like, and other things like, I think I got into, I didn't used to read books at all just because I didn't have the time or energy, but now I'm actually a self-development nerd. I love to read those kind of books. <laughs> so, so hitting those things off daily is like a necessity. It's usually part of my morning ritual. So like I said, try to do three things that does your physical, your mental and your spiritual aspects, because you need all three of those to be in balance. And if you neglect it, it's gonna it's gonna show up in other parts of your life. Yeah, like uh, the the bounce back coach concept is uh, adding one more. Uh, for for some people, it's it's when when you have the physical and the emotional, but but then others they, they, they take the spiritual in, which you already mentioned with the meditation. But you can also take it from a social perspective. Because um, a lot of times it shows when people are in any form of crisis, they, they cannot crawl out of, of the dig they are, or, or of, of the ditch or whatever you call it they are in by themselves. They, they, mm -hmm. they will make a better leap forward if, if they reach out to others. Mm. I'm not mm. sure if that in your journey was um, essential because you seem to me like a person who having a lot of strength within and, and managing to, to make your life how you wanted it to be. Um, but actually, it, yeah, yeah, you are. I, I, that's actually a really good point. That is, that is something um, I do want to touch upon. And that's a thing that I've recently discovered is called uh, find your tribe or your vibe attracts your tribe. And that is such a crucial role I realize now because when I was in New York, you know, a lot when I was in my twenties, a lot of my friends or social circles involved drinking, going out, partying. <clears throat> when I turned 30, those things didn't become important to me. So like I that's when I started to, I guess you want to call it mature. And things like reading books or like going on hikes, those are things that I then started to have more interest in. And for me to have those kind of friends in New York was was hard. So as I've moved across the world in places like Chiang Mai, especially, I have some of my best friends living out here. And these are people I came from home. These are people I've met out here. 
And that's why Chiang Mai has, I was only supposed to be here for six months. I've been here for almost like 14 months now. It's because this is what I consider home. It's not the place, but the people. And this is where my tribe is. And you know, it's that for sure is a huge, has been a huge factor in my journey. Meeting, like I said, my first trip to Thailand when I got to meet these other expats and see, they, they're the ones who impacted me and, and kind of motivated me to be like, wow, these people are doing it. I, I can follow their footsteps. You know, like it wasn't some crazy thought. So yeah, for sure, when, you, when you're able to surround yourself by like-minded individuals, that is a huge, huge thing. And going to these things like where we met at the meditation places, you know, being around a conscious community, I, I think for me, whenever I look at a place uh, for a check mark, I need to have like clean air, uh, nature, but there also needs to be like clean or a, a conscious community of people that I can relate to, whether it's through meditation, through, you know, hiking or whatever. But like there needs to be a healthy group of individuals I can socialize with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, fabulous. I'm so happy that, that, you, that you actually find a new home in, in Chiang Mai. Um, I personally, as you know, have found homes in, in Asia. I have, I have two places who I hold very dearly, one being Singapore, although Singapore has redeveloped itself and, and renewed itself many times since I've left. But the other one is definitely uh, Taiwan, which is a great, great, great place for going hiking and, and, and having really these beautiful connections with individuals. And um, yeah, where, where partying and boozing is definitely <laughs> not the number one thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you mentioned your tribe. Um, perhaps it would be great if you just uh, share quickly what tribe building you are currently doing. I, I heard from you, you are doing a Udemy course, so please share some more information about that. I'm sure, sure. it has to do with new Thai boxing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, this is my first Udemy course, so it's, it's about weightlifting and physical health. And, you know, it's, I, like I said, I've been doing physical health stuff since high school. So, you know, people always come up to me like, hey, Chris, you look in really great shape. What do you do? And I've always been like, ah, whatever, you know, like, yeah. But now I'm like, you know, what? like, how can I give value to the world? And for me, when I learned about Udemy, I'm teaching with video courses. I was like, you know what? I enjoy creating videos. I've been doing a lot of video blogging. And physical health is something that I can talk about easily. So, you know, what? why don't I try to help the world? And this is my first step in doing that. So, yeah, so I go into my gym routine, which is, you know, which body parts. So I have five different body parts you work at, like your chest, your back, your shoulders, your legs, your arms. And I break down my physical routine. And then I also supplement it with things such as uh, rest and recovery, like what kind of nutrition, what you should be doing to recover your muscles when you're not at the gym. Because these are other things that people don't focus on sometimes. They forget about it because, you know, it's it's not just – what you do in the gym, but it's also what you do outside the gym, which is just important. So this is the course. I've been working on it for about two months now. I was down in Phuket last month, and I spent two weeks there shooting film at some of the nice gyms there because Phuket's a very – it's a big hotbed of fitness. A lot of people go there mm-hmm. for Muay Thai, MMA, it's just to lose weight, and it's a fitness holiday. And that's where I lived for a year and a half. So I went down to the Seal of Friends, but I also got to do some work. So I'm hoping to release the course in the next week or so, and I'm – Definitely going to give it to your to your followers for free. I I love to do that. Wonderful, that's fabulous. I definitely want to give it a try. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> sitting here in South Germany, and it's now winter time. You need definitely an extra boost to keep active and keep going. <laughs> um, luckily, I have a running partner who I meet uh, three times a week. Other than that, I would just pile on uh, extra kilos from all the Christmas cookies that's uh, currently <laughs> on the table. <laughs> I have, a, I have a sweet tooth also. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all about balance, you know, and, and, and uh, knowing there are good things that are going into your body. If you start off with these and they are delicious, then and the rest is, is, is easy. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I want to thank, thank you so much, Christopher, for um, sharing with us your journey and, and, and letting us know about... Um, how you are progressing in life. I'm, I'm really curious to hear uh, also in the future. Please tell me and share with me what, what's, um, what are you up to. Um, this was only the start. This was the, the first interview I had with a very resilient soul, and I'm so happy that you could join me for this. And um, I wish you really all, all the best for the future forward. 
Thank you so much, John. I'm really honored to, to be your first guest. And thank you so much for, for reaching out and, and finding me. And this has been a lot of fun. So thank you so much. I'm so honored. Thank you.